Hey friends, Fargo here, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Activity Ace, the series where we go over statistics, strategies, and guides for your favorite minigames. In this case, we're going over every Lapis puzzle, including the old ones and the new ones. Before we jump into it, you can also check the wiki, I'll have a link down in the description. But here is all of the information we have on the puzzles just from the wiki, and I'll hopefully be able to bring a visual representation for those that are a visual learner like myself. So you can see here is all the information. I won't be pulling any information from the wiki, but I'll try my best to kind of explain from experience because I am a Toontown Online player and I've done these many times. So at this point, it's really muscle memory. Now there's four old mini games that you might remember. And there's also a few new ones that we haven't heard of before. Uh, if you're new to Corporate Clash, if you want to start doing LawBot because of the new updates, uh, I have a few pointers for you. I have a few strats and I kind of want to explain what all these mini games are, what they do. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because there's not a whole lot of videos out there explaining every single mini game all put into one video. And that's kind of what I want to do is to kind of modernize the format. This is going to be a full comprehensive video about everything there is to do with these puzzle rooms, every activity, all of these mini games, and we're going to try and put that all into one video and explain everything. Once again, we have the very keen Quirky Boingenbacher to help us along with these puzzles. So you want to thank him for all of his hard work going through these offices by himself. So with puzzles, we want to start with the classics. And I think the best one to start off with is probably going to be drag three of a color in a row. So this puzzle is pretty simple. All you have to do is drag three of a color in a row. So what that means is we want to take all of these shapes and drag them together. Now you only need to do this with three in a row. We're going to kind of use this triangle as an example. When you walk over a triangle, or any shape for that matter, it'll follow you until you walk off the board. As you can see, it is no longer following us. So we can step on it again when we walk onto the board, and we can move it up, left, wherever we want to move it. Now if we try and move over another shape, then it won't follow us anymore. However, whatever whatever we step on will start following us. So we can go left and right, up and down with this shape, but this is not the shape we want to be poking around with. So, let's walk over the triangle again. You see that there are two triangles up here. All we have to do is move it up. And there we go, the triangles are completed. So that's very simple. You don't have to drag all four of them together, but if you really wanted to, you can. So, here. Uh, dragging four in a row won't give you any extra bonus points, but if you do this in a office with me, I'm gonna appreciate you a lot more. Alright, and this puzzle is complete. So just to demonstrate on how quickly you can actually complete this puzzle, it's pretty, pretty quick. This puzzle is probably the easiest puzzle, aside from a few that we're gonna talk about later on, but it's one of the easiest classic puzzles and it definitely takes advantage of free camera movement a lot more than other puzzles, which we'll talk about later as well. Now here's Skullfinder. Now, to some people, this board may look very daunting, but to me, this board is a playground for infinite possibilities. Uh, now, a lot of people are going to have problems with Skullfinder, so I feel like I need to sit down and really explain this one. Me being someone that usually uh, ends up completing this anyway, because everyone sits back and just doesn't do it. Uh, uh, I, I gotta teach you guys how to do this. <laughs> now, Skullfinder, if you don't know what it is, it's actually just Toontown Minesweeper. Now, if you've never played Minesweeper, back in my day, uh, in Windows XP times, when we were still playing Toontown Online, Minesweeper was actually installed on every computer as a preset. Uh, this was one of many computer games, like Solitaire, or... I'm sure a version of Breakout was on Windows XP, uh, but that's besides the point. Minesweeper was on every computer, and because Minesweeper was on every computer, uh, Skullfinder had to be made, because this was a game that everyone was accustomed to back in the day. Uh, nowadays, I don't think anyone really knows how to do this. Uh, just a select few people know how to do this. Uh, so for anyone that is younger or didn't grow up with Toontown Online, or just doesn't know what Minesweeper is, I, I would recommend getting it on your phone now because they don't install it on these computers anymore. 
but I would recommend getting it on your phone. Just look up Minesweeper. That's probably the best way to practice, aside from going in these offices yourself and just trying to do Skull Finder. Now before we get into anything related to Minesweeper or Skull Finder, I just want to give you guys one tip here. Um, when doing Skull Finder, now a lot of people don't know this, this is actually a trick that uh, only a few people know about. Uh, doing Minesweeper or Skull Finder in Toontown, the first row here is actually completely free of skulls. So if you want to walk on this line here, this will actually be good. Uh, just to kind of clear up this first line, because if it was possible to have a bomb on this first row, it would all be up to RNG depending on what you hit. So it's probably best that this first row doesn't have any mines in it at all. Uh, it, it'll never have mines, so you may as well just do this. Now this is very easy, all you have to do is sit here, go all the way across, and that reveals a lot of information for us. Alright, now with this information revealed, I'm going to teach you guys exactly how to do Minesweeper. So, for a standard number, uh, this is 2 and 1, every number is its own tile. Now if there is a number on them, that means that there is a bomb touching this number. And what that means is either diagonal, or left and right, up and down, something is touching this tile. So this tile is telling us that there is a singular bomb attached to this tile. Now what that means is it's likely this one. So when you see a one corner like this, it tells us a lot of information about this section of the board. It tells us that this one is touching a diagonal. So this right here is a bomb. Now looking at this one, curiously enough, it's also touching this. But something it's also doing is touching this tile. So this tile has to not be a bomb because there's only one bomb touching this tile. Therefore, by process of elimination, this is not a bomb, you see? So we've just revealed a two. Now that's kind of the gist of Minesweeper. It's pretty simple once you get used to it. Uh, it can get kind of difficult as you see like there's twos involved and it can get a little challenging up here. But the more you practice, the more you play Minesweeper on your phone, I think the better you get at this game. It's all about trying to figure out what's what. But I'm going to do another board to kind of show an example of what I'm trying to get at. Uh, one that involves threes, so I'll go ahead and do the next board up ahead. However, keep in mind that doing the entire board isn't necessary, so long as you open up the possibility of hitting the button. As you see, I just did it. Uh, so, so long as you can get to the button, that's all that matters. You don't have to complete the entire board, per se, but if you really wanted to, you could. Though, for Skull Finder, unlike traditional Minesweeper, you just have to get to the other side. So, we're gonna move on to the next board. Alright, so here's a new board. Let's see if this is more challenging. Let's go ahead and do our trick. Oh, wow, that was quick. And we already solved it. <laughs> so, you end up getting boards like that, but um, that's not what I want to show off right now. So, uh, we talked about ones and how ones are really easy to discern whether or not there's a skull. Uh, so, the one, obviously, there's a skull right here. If there's a one corner, uh, like I talked about, this one as well, there's obviously a skull here because of the one corner. Uh, so that means that this is not a bomb, this is not a bomb, that's not a bomb. But I do want to talk about twos real quick. So twos, uh, when there's a two here, that means there are two bombs adjacent to it. So in looking at this, there's another one corner, so that obviously means this is a bomb. Uh, there's also a one here, which tells us that there's a bomb, it's touching. And so the two indicates that there is, yes, there is a bomb here, but there's also a bomb here, which is why it's a two. Uh, this is also the same, so you see this 2, there's a bomb here and a bomb here, we know that for a fact. Uh, so this 2 is telling us the same information that this 2 is telling us. However, it's giving us more key information, uh, and that key information is that this is not a bomb, interestingly enough. So this 2 is telling us that there's a bomb here, this 2 is also telling us that there's a bomb here. Which is why two corners are really important, because a two corner will tell us that there's a bomb here and here. And this one is telling us that this is a bomb, so this is not a bomb. 
therefore making this a corner one, which is telling us that this is absolutely a bomb. Now threes are a bit more of a challenge. Uh, threes can be difficult if the information around the three is not very good. Uh, in our case, the information around the three is actually pretty good. Uh, we have one numbers telling us that there is a bomb here. So this is very obviously the bomb. So this one is going to tell us that this is a bomb. This is not a bomb. So we can kind of clear that up pretty easy. Uh, this one is telling us that there's a bomb here because there is a corner one. This is a bomb. So we can kind of infer that this is not a bomb. There we go. We just solved that three. So this three is telling us that there is a bomb here, here, and here. So that is a very easy way to solve this two. So this two is telling us that there's a skull here and here. Therefore, this is not, this is not, and this is not. Also, this one is telling us that that is not either. And we just solved the board. So, if you want to solve the board, it's completely up to you, but your Toon teammates might not appreciate you sitting here and trying to solve the board, but this is the whole board finished. Uh, so we talked about ones, we talked about twos, and we talked about threes. Uh, I've never seen a four on these boards, but I think it's possible. Uh, it's very possible to get fours in Skull Finder, so if you have a four, um, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> but that should be everything. Uh, in terms of having other people solve this with you, it's very possible. Um, if you need help solving these boards, people will gladly come and help you. Uh, two tunes can sit here and uh, do the board together. Uh, you should never stand next to the tune that is solving the board because he, you might push him into a skull, which would be a big problem. So this is definitely doable with two tunes, but it's probably a solo mission unless someone asks for help. All right, next on our list is avoid the skulls. Now this one is pretty easy. Uh, if you've ever strafed, then it's probably gonna be really easy for you. Uh, so this game is literally just avoid the skulls. So any skull that comes up here on the board uh, will disappear and will be replaced by an empty space. And then after that empty space becomes a dot, it'll become a skull again. So this pattern kind of repeats. Uh, you'll see it's empty dot skull empty dot skull so it's a predefined pattern uh, of course it's all randomly generated this is probably one of the easier ones but it's very easy to mess up if you kind of understand what I'm getting at so you can walk on the empty space you can walk on the dot but you can't walk on the skull. So the dot kind of helps you figure out where the next skull is gonna go since it's a predetermined pattern. Oh wow, that's scary. Um, so it, it's something that you wanna really pay attention to because if you see a line of skulls, it's probably best to go for that line. But since we have strafing technology in Corporate Clash, you can actually go left and right if you're careful enough. Uh, so it's pretty easy to avoid the skulls. Uh, but it's difficult to kind of learn exactly how to do it, how to tackle this problem. So this is definitely not when we want to go. We could probably go up here, but we'll see. So we're going to attempt to try and do this. All right, we're going. All right, we land on an empty space. Move to the right. Move forward. Move to the left and forward. And then we can just keep going. So strafing is very important in this minigame. In Avoid the Skulls, you probably shouldn't help the person that is doing it. If you try and help, there's a chance you could step on a skull, or if you bump into them, then you, there's a chance you could actually push them into a skull, which is not ideal. So this is a solo puzzle. Just keep in mind that if someone is doing Avoid the Skulls, do not try and do it with them. Just one more time so you guys can get familiar with it. Strafing couldn't be more important in this scenario. Look at that clean cut. Alright, and the last classic game that I want to talk about is matching. So the matching puzzle is also very self-explanatory. It's pretty simple. I mean, 
What it is, is really just you have to match up a color, whether it be the triangle or the square, and you just have to match it together to make uh, one full pattern. This puzzle doesn't require multiple people. Uh, you usually want to do it solo, but if you want to help, there's a potential to help. If someone is on the other side of the puzzle, like over here, and they can't really walk over without uh, messing it up, then someone from the other side over here can actually come in and help the tune if they really need to. Alright, let's do it one more time, but doing the reds instead. Now you can kind of see how having an extra helping hand could be helpful. Let's say there's a tune over by that triangle. If the set was like this, and that tune was over there, logically, they shouldn't move from that spot, or they'll turn all these squares triangles, or they'll turn all these squares triangles. Now, the best way to avoid that is if they're standing over there, and that's a red square. Let's go ahead and make that a red square real quick. So if that's a red square, then another tune can come over here and just simply do this. And then the board's complete. So, it can be done with two tunes, but it's recommended one tune, unless they're in the back row here. If they're in the back row, you are definitely obligated to fill it in for them. Just so they don't have to run all the way back and try and correct what they undid. One thing you shouldn't do is try and help them while they're working on the puzzle, or else there's a chance you could be doing triangles and they'll be doing squares and you'll just be undoing everything that they were doing, so... It's definitely not recommended for two people, but if there's one other person here, and they're on that side, may as well fill it in for them. Alright, so now with the classic ones done, we can finally move on to the newer ones that were released for Corporate Clash exclusively. This board is kind of unusual. It's not something you can easily read from first glance. It's Simon Says. If you haven't played Simon Says, Simon does something and you have to copy Simon. In this scenario, you don't actually listen to someone say Simon Says. You actually just follow this. So it's just really uh, copy the symbols that show up in the a rectangle of skulls. So the rectangle of skulls represent Simon and essentially what that means is icons will show up within the rectangle that indicate what you're supposed to do uh, with these icons down here. So these icons represent what you can press. So we'll walk up to Simon Says and it'll tell us what we have to do. So let's go ahead and press it. X square square square. So if you ever want to read it again, press the little circle over here, x, square, square, square. So it only ever does four at a time. And from the information that we're given, we have to decide which ones to press. Now, the order is indicated by the Simon bot. You can go ahead and press it again, x, square, square, square. So what we want to do is x, square, square, square. And there we go, we defeated Simon. That's kind of the general gist of Simon Says. You really just have to focus on that rectangle of skulls and it'll tell you exactly what you need to press. Now, the only other way I can think of when it comes to helping someone with Simon Says is if someone walks up to Simon Says and attempts to do it, but they don't really have the memory for it, you can watch them press the circle if they're struggling with it. You can say in chat like, hey, it's, you know, it's X square, square, square. And that'll help tell people exactly what you're trying to say, just to indicate to the player uh, what he needs to do, and he should be able to do it pretty easy. Now, I don't know a single person that doesn't know what Connect 4 is. For anyone that hasn't played the tabletop game of Connect 4, uh, essentially what you have to do is take your uh, circles. I think as a tune, you are default the green circle. Uh, you take your circle and you insert it in one of the columns. Now, the columns indicate where the circles can go. The red represent the cogs. So we'll go ahead and throw our circle right here. 
So, there's our circle. Now you can see that the cogs have placed their circle here. Now, what this means is if we don't put our circle here, they have an opportunity to block us from a connect three. So the goal of this whole game is to connect three of these circles. So, to prevent the cogs from blocking our circle, we should put our circle here. Ah, and you see in their stacking theirs now. So, since they didn't block my furthest point here, and they instead decided to go up, uh, we can put our last circle right here. And that's how you beat Connect 3. Um, the AI is not very good in that minigame, so they won't really attempt to block you. Um, if they did, it would be kind of interesting to see how long that could go for, but that was Connect 3. It was pretty simple, uh, not a whole lot to learn from that, it's just really click the button. Uh, people do this minigame really fast, it's probably the fastest minigame that people complete. Probably the easiest, because the AI is so bad. Some people even take two seconds to finish this puzzle, like just run across the line here and then it's complete, but that's Connect 3. Pretty self-explanatory, probably don't need anyone to really help you with this because if it's done in two seconds then there's no real chance for anyone else to help out. So it's a pretty quick one. Pretty easy, pretty quick. Alright, just one more time. Uh, we went horizontally, let's go vertically this time. There we go, all done. Alright, the next puzzle game on our list is called Trapper. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, this is a derivative of Tapper, which was an old Atari game that was on the 2600. Now, if anyone owned an Atari 2600 like I did, you'll know that Tapper was a game about bartending at a bar, and what you did was you served drinks to people in columns. Now, I think, I believe it was columns of five, I'm not entirely sure, I don't really remember, but I believe it was columns of five, maybe it was four. But this kind of, uh, this kind of is in the same spirit, it's in the same vein as Tapper. Uh, some people might also recognize this as, uh, Space Invaders. I played a lot of Space Invaders. Uh, it's kind of the same concept where things are coming at you, uh, very slowly and you have to try and make sure they don't land on your spaceship or try and land on the traps. So, I'm guessing this... The numbers represent cogs and you're trapping them with a TNT, I'm assuming that's what that means, but uh, it's pretty good ode to Tapper uh, and Space Invaders. It's a really, really cool concept, and I can't believe this was a thing that we thought of. It's really, really brilliant, i would be honest. But enough of that, that's kind of just the general origin story of it. Let's actually figure out how to do it. Now, a lot of people will tell you that this is a, a two-player game, Realistically, all four people could technically be doing this, but it's recommended that there's two people for this minigame, which is really kind of cool because it means that more people can get involved with this puzzle. It's, it's not just a solo puzzle. It's one of the only puzzles that almost requires two people. So we're going to struggle a little bit trying to complete this, but we'll try our best. Uh, so you have to defeat nine numbers in total. The goal is to probably get rid of the lowest numbers, maybe try and get rid of those highest numbers if they get too low to the bottom, but let's go ahead and start. So here's the technique. This is how you're supposed to do it. Uh, you want to use your strafing as much as you can. This is a game that you really want to use your strafing on because it'll help you a whole lot. Um, being able to strafe I don't think you'd be able to do this without strafing, or you'd need you'd absolutely need more tunes if there was no strafing. So having strafing is really, really nice for this minigame. It really kind of teaches you how to strafe in some sense. But hey, we're done with Trapper, we finished it. So it's a pretty easy minigame. It's not the most difficult thing, but if you don't know how to do it, then it can be kind of a challenge. If you're not doing the double up strategy where you walk over and strafe over both buttons, then it's very challenging. It, it almost makes it impossible if you're not careful. So, Trapper, pretty easy, unless you don't know how to strafe. Alright, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was informative. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, if you 
think someone else needs this information, tell a friend, because I know a lot of tunes out there don't really know how to do these puzzles, or just try to avoid them because they don't want to mess up. Uh, but this, I hope this was a good enough uh, example of what to do and how to do these puzzles. These puzzles are really fun. Uh, I really like the new ones. The old ones are uh, good nostalgia, and I really appreciate those too. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and share with your friends. Make sure to subscribe to join the Hypno Party, and I've been Fargo. Stay hypnotized, folks. duck right like it's dressed as a different type of bird and I, it, it's it's not it's not just in the appearance of a different That's type of bird, bird. It, it's it's dressed as it it's it's an abomination right like, bird. it's like me wearing wearing someone else's skin as a costume like, wait, it makes no I, sense i feel like we've gone through this again ducks aren't birds are you just gonna sit there silently can, can someone acknowledge that? No one agrees, right? Space, right? Ducks aren't birds. No, they're birds. N what, wait, can they fly? Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm pretty sure. No, they can't. They swim. So if anything, they're closer to fish. I mean... What? What, what, are, you, what are you saying? What are you, what oh. are you talking about? So you just silent for like 20 seconds? Featherless biped doesn't mean it's a man. Like.